In the previous video, I have learned the basics of a game developer, which are the foundation of my RPG open world game. The basic foundations comprises of player, communications, and ability. If you have not watched the previous video, please check the description below. Today, we will set up the environment to build the game that including PC, the softwares we need, the gears, recording criteria, and all sort of stuff. If you are new to this channel, please consider to give a like and subscribe. That makes a lot to me. So without any further delay, let's dive into the getting started episode now. At first, I need a PC. I'm using AMD Ryzen 9 5950X 16 core 32 threads AM4 desktop processor. For graphics card, I'm using Gigabyte GeForce RTX 3080. I have 32GB RAM. For operating system, I am using Windows 11. All the details are there in the description below. To build this PC, I have spent almost $5,000. All my dollars are in Australian dollars. I got this PC custom made from centercom.com. If you are in Australia, visit this store online. I spent bit of a time in choosing my game engine, Unity or Unreal. Both are free, however there are some terms and conditions to use. Please refer to their website for the details. Links are in the description box below. Till now, I have tried both the softwares, but somehow I find Unreal is easier than Unity. Although I am a hardcore programmer, Unity has open scope of programming than Unreal. Both the application has some pros and cons. There are some arguments, comparisons are made by several game developers. But this decision is solely mine and I prefer to stick to that. Hence, I am choosing Unreal over Unity. For cinematic sound, I will be using Mixit or epidemic sounds. Links are there in the description below. If required, I will consider buying it in future. For video recording, I am using OBS Studios. It's free to use. Details there in the description box below. I am using my iPhone as a webcam over Wi-Fi. For that, I have downloaded Epoch Cam Pro. Epoch Cam Pro has got the functionality of audio recording and it can connect as a webcam over Wi-Fi. It costed me one time 13 Australian dollars. For the mic, I got Blue Snowball Ice Black. It costed me 69 dollars. For video editing, I am using Adobe Premiere Pro. It is bit expensive though, but so far I am used to it and I quite like it. For that, I am paying 311 Australian dollars per year. I am also maintaining an expense sheet to track all my expenses. We will be revisiting in every episode. Now let's start install Unreal and set up the basic infrastructure. To install Unreal, search in Google to reach to the Unreal website. Once you are on the website, create a new account and download Epic Game Console. Downloading the software depends upon internet speed. It may take some time. Once downloaded, launch Epic Game Console and sign in. Post signing in, you can explore all the options at the toolbar. I'll cover those later. I'll be making my games in Unreal version 5, hence I have chosen to install version 5 Unreal Engine. However, you can choose older version as well from UE4 tab. I also have chosen Quixel Bridge plugin as it was showing in the world. Quixel Bridge installation will require .NET Framework to install as a dependency. Once installation is completed, let's launch Unreal Engine 5. In the game section, there are multiple game templates are given. Depending upon the types of the game, we can select specific templates. However, this selection can be changed later. For my game, I am selecting third person template with a blueprint option for desktop platform with maximum preset quality. For preset, you can choose medium quality as it impacts the PC's performance while in development. I also have included the starter pack content which will give me some basic starter materials like mannequins, static meshes, some materials, textures and so on. Here is my initial setup of my Unreal Editor. As I have chosen third person template, here is the basic setup they have given. There is a player, then there are some meshes and the walls have been set here. All these we can see it on the right hand side here. This is called World Outliner. Each of these meshes are static mesh, like floor, wall 7, wall 9, wall 11, wall. This is a weird name. We'll look into the naming convention in my later episodes. Now, if I need to change any of these meshes or the actor, I can simply drag around the axis and play around with it. 
Here are the some basic controls are given for the meshes. To do the rotation of this meshes, we can select this and we can select how we can rotate. On the left hand side, we have some actors. There are different, different types of actors. Like for example, in the shapes, we can add more cubes. We can place these cubes anywhere in the map. We can see all the properties of these cubes like locations, rotation, scale and then on and so on. There is a color they have been put it in by default and here is the material which has been added to that cube. Now it's time to play. To play this we can just simply press this button. The controls are like normal windows gaming controls W, A, S and D. W means go forward, A go left, D go right and S go back. These are the basic controls which have been configured in the starter pack. They also have given space to jump. Oh, the jump is very weird. Who jumps like that? One of the important controls which is very helpful I found is press ALT and right mouse button click and then you can rotate. If we press Q, it goes down. If we press E, it goes up. And then we can see on the top view. If we need to go to a particular mesh, then we can select from world outliner. Let's for example, and to go to cube, this one, which is selected and press F, it will take me there. By default, all these meshes physics are not enabled. We can certainly go to the properties and check for physics. We can search here for a quick search. If you know the property name, then you can search it here and then let's select physics. So once I play, it will just fall down so like this. Oh, that's good. Now, if I need to change the shape of that, then I can just select this and then I can change the shape of the cube. Okay, enough of exploration. So in the next one, we will see how we can animate my third person player character so that we can introduce crouch walk we can fix the jump not like gangam style jump and we'll explore more on the animation of the character i hope you like it please comment your opinion thank you for watching